I would say is, how much time do you have? <laughs> and then I would say, if I tried to sum it up, wow. Um, you know, a lot of these things come down to money, you know, how, how investment makes money. And um, we had uh, motion picture studios that actually financed movies. They didn't concentrate simply on the distribution of movies. And it was not uh, an era of sequels, or tent poles, or water slides, or theme parks. <laughs> it was um, a, a business where if you did something that was kind of new, you could be in a couple of theaters for weeks and weeks, and then you'd maybe go to as many as, wow, 50 theaters, or 100 theaters. So a movie would last um, for a year and, um, and get its money back, but that was a completely different circumstance from now. Now I would think the, the, the most prevailing factor now is the brevity of all, first of all, our attention spans, and uh, the brevity of um, any kind of uh, controversy or, or currency of anything, boom, we're on to the next. Uh, whatever uh, diverts our attention in this uh, uh, new technology that we have been uh, either blessed with or settled with. And uh, so I would say if you compare the Hollywood of 1958 to the Hollywood now, that would be the greatest comparison, but the, but the evolution or the devolution, however you want to uh, view, uh, the prospects of what David Lean once said to me uh, was uh, that movies were the great near art form of the 20th century. Um, and I think, of, uh, I think of him often, he was a friend of mine, I learned a lot from him, <coughs> that I compare, you know, if you did Lawrence of Arabia now and you, you had spent the equivalent of I don't know, what would it be, uh, 350 million or, or something, I don't know, don't pin me with that. But, um, and then uh, an equal amount in marketing, et cetera, so that you had to do about 800 million, let, let's say, to break even, and this is an unknown actor in the desert with a camel. <laughs> and then another uh, unknown actor is coming over the horizon, very beautifully photographed, but, um, uh, and he had a camel. Um, uh, I, uh, it, uh, and that's one of the, the great movies that has ever been made. Now, uh, here, nowadays, we, we're, I, I, I keep, uh, you know, what Marshall McLuhan called rear view mirror thinking. Um, the sequel kind of tells us what we're going to get. Um, it's sort of like fast food. We, we trust uh, a certain fast food. There's a place that I'm thinking about right now because about an hour ago I had a hamburger from the Apple Pen, you know? And that's a serious matter. <laughs> so I'm not negating the wanting to know uh, what you're gonna get if you leave the house. So I, I would say that uh, there is a future in the motion picture business that will uh, involve <clears throat> coming to grips with what was the consent decree of the Supreme Court in 1948 in which the studios had to divest themselves uh, of, of their theaters. Because this thing that is pretty much a two-hour art form was uh, created by theater owners. They wanted to sell uh, tickets uh, twice in one night. And uh, so we, we may be on the road to something better. Um, but it's going to take a lot of agonizing between exhibition and distribution and, uh, and the financing resulting uh, of, um, of uh, this little thing called movies. Do you get the feeling that I could keep on going for quite a while? <laughs> so I'm going to stop because um, I don't want to be um, criticized by exhibition. <laughs> well, what we can do 